Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about leptin and I'm going to explain why just about everything you think you know about leptin is wrong, at least some of it. In the last video we talked about ghrelin, the so-called hunger hormone, and we talked about how that physiology is actually a little, quite a bit different than uh, what we thought for a long time. The same is true of leptin. Now leptin is widely known as a satiety hormone. It's something that we believe is generated, synthesized by adipocytes or fat cells. And the classic story is that these fat cells, uh, they release leptin into the bloodstream. That leptin travels through the blood uh, and crosses the blood brain barrier and uh, signals to specific places in the brain, especially the hypothalamus. This is the classic understanding and teaching about leptin, that it's a hormone that travels through the blood and signals to the brain. Well, it turns out that this is a very oversimplified idea of leptin. Leptin is far more complicated and sophisticated than we've always thought. So leptin is a 148 amino acid protein, and it's made in a lot of different tissues throughout the body, including fat cells or adipocytes. Leptin is also made in the brain. It's made in the pancreas. Uh, in the immune cells, it's made in the heart, the eye, the liver, kidneys, a lot of different uh, tissues and organs in the body make leptin, uh, as you see in this diagram. That being said, uh, leptin is made in the greatest amounts in adipocytes. Now, if we want to really understand the physiology of leptin, we need to ask the question, okay, well, what really is the target organ of leptin. Where is it signaling? And to do that, we can ask the simple question of, well, where do we find leptin receptors in the body? Well, you find it, yes, in the brain, but you also find it in the lung. You find it in the liver, fairly high amounts, kidney, muscle, immune cells, and that turns out to be very important. So you can see pretty quickly that leptin is made in a lot of different tissues, and leptin receptor is also found in a lot of tissues. It is not simply adipocytes or fat in brain. Far more complicated. Two very important structures where we also find the leptin receptor is the vagus nerve, incredibly important. Uh, this is the primary connection between the gut and the brain. So this makes sense that as visceral fat and the organs of the abdomen generate leptin, it signals the quickest and most direct manner or pathway through the vagus nerve. We also find in leptin receptors in the sensory nerves innervating adipocytes. In other words, the sensory nerves that are direct, uh, delivering signals from fat cells to the brain. And both subcutaneous fat and visceral fat have these sensory nerves that have leptin receptors. So although the classic story is that adipocytes generate leptin and the more fat a person has, the more leptin is generated, uh, the more direct and maybe the most powerful signaling of leptin occurs through nerves. So leptin is a hormone, but it is also a neurotransmitter, potentially primarily a neurotransmitter. Now the brain is organized in a very sophisticated manner. If, if we go on just the classic model of leptin just generated by fat cells indiscriminately or at least generically and it's released in the blood, this signal to the brain is one signal. It's, it's a simple dial type mechanism where the more fat a person has, the higher the leptin levels. It turns out that the brain has a way of discriminating where signals are coming from. In other words, it can determine which fat depot a particular signal is coming from, subcutaneous fat, visceral fat, and then broken down far more uh, specifically than that. So the system is more advanced than the classic model of leptin just being a hormone uh, recognizes by far. And this gives uh, the brain tremendous power in controlling the different tissues and organs of the body. It turns out that adipocytes, fat cells, they communicate with the brain, but also through sophisticated neurocircuits, they're communicating with brown adipocytes. These are brown fat cells that 
primarily are burning fat to generate heat, this thermogenesis. As leptin is secreted by adipocytes, uh, it stimulates those sensory afferent nerves from the fat tissue to the brain. And from the brain, it increases sympathetic nervous activity to a lot of tissues, including brown adipocytes. And this stimulates uh, thermogenesis in brown adipocytes. So in this way, white fat cells are communicating with brown fat cells through the brain using leptin and these sensory nerves and efferent nerves, sympathetic nerves to brown adipocytes. Much has been made uh, about leptin resistance. And the classic idea is that people who are obese, they generate a lot of leptin. And so the blood levels of leptin are very high. And then because of that, they're sort of over, overworking the leptin receptors in the brain and the brain becomes less responsive to the leptin that's in the blood. But it turns out that leptin resistance really is being driven by the vagus nerve and resistance to leptin on the part of the vagus nerve. And you get some degree of downregulation of leptin receptors in the vagus nerve and then that signal is not transmitted effectively to the brain. There are great experiments showing that um, you can be leptin sensitive in the hypothalamus, but if you ligate or perform a vagotomy, you cut the vagus nerve, leptin, that, that organism, that animal, becomes leptin resistant. There's another hormone that should be mentioned, that's cholecystokinin, CCK. It's another gut peptide or hormone uh, it's something that's released when we eat a meal that also signals primarily through the vagus nerve. Well, cholecystokinin or CCK and leptin, they work together sort of synergistically through the vagus nerve. CCK signals through the vagus nerve to the brain that a person has consumed an adequate amount and they feel full, satiety, and they stop eating. Well, in order for that CCK to signal through the vagus nerve, you need leptin sensitivity of the vagus nerve also. And in this way, they work together. And if you develop leptin resistance in the vagus nerve, downregulate those leptin receptors, CCK doesn't work as well. And animals, humans will overeat and they'll eat more frequently if you downregulate those leptin receptors in the vagus nerve. Main points of this video, leptin is made by a lot of different tissues in the body and a lot of tissues and organs receive that leptin signal in addition to the brain. Uh, leptin is probably more a neurotransmitter than it is a hormone. It signals the most quickly and profoundly through nerves, vagus nerve and sensory nerves that abut adipocytes. Uh, this is a very efficient system and in this way the brain is able to determine very specifically uh, what is going on in peripheral tissues, including adipocytes. If you knock down or cause dysfunction in the sensory nerves to the fat cells or to the vagus nerve, you get alterations in metabolism and you get metabolic disease. So leptin is far more sophisticated and important uh, in metabolism and weight than has previously been appreciated so important for us to understand physiology if we are going to prevent and reverse these metabolic diseases uh, that we see so frequently in America today. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, please subscribe, punch the like button. We'll see you next time.